everyone doing? So, Strength Chat episode 46, and today I have got a very special guest for you. Today I am joined by multiple-time World's Strongest Man athlete, multiple-time British and UK Strongest Man, the legend that is, Lawrence Charlet. How are you doing? I'm very good, buddy. Thank you very much. Um, so, what have you been up to? What's been, what's been going on with you? <coughs> um, I've had a pretty busy year so far. Um, I went to World's Strongest Man earlier in the year. Um, more recently, just come back from Dubai, the, the WUS comp over there, which was really, really good. Uh, just done a small show this weekend in the Faroe Islands, uh, which I won. So, nice finish to the year. And now my oh, main thing is uh, uh, concentrate on winning the British in January. Okay. So, is it um, the build up to the British then, or do you get time to have a little bit of chill out? or? Today, today I'll have off, and then from tomorrow we've got eight weeks of solid training towards the British. Okay. Um, so, how? What are your expectations for the for the British? Uh, quite honestly, I want to win. You know, um, yeah. Eddie's not doing it this year, so it opens it up. Um, you know, the events have kind of not officially been announced, but um, I've been told it's going to be some kind of deadlift, some kind of overhead press a loading event, Atlas Stones, and a frame carry. So all good standard strongman events. <coughs> um, I know when I'm in form, I can beat any guy in the UK. A um, couple of good events in there for me. No real weaknesses. Um, it's going to be a tough show. You know, we've got so many good British guys now. Graham Hicks is looking in great shape. You know, there's still going to be like the old guys, Mark Felix, Terry Hollands, Adam Bishop's had a great year, the Stoltmans, as well as multiple other guys that are kind of all coming through now. But I still believe I'm, I'm the best guy, you know. I, I, I will be going there. I'm going to have fun. I always try to have fun and enjoy this sport. I think a lot of people make the mistake of putting too much pressure on themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to win. I never hide that fact. Um, and I'll be trying my, my damnedest to win. But at the end of the day, for me, it's, it's fun. It's a strongman comp and, you know, win, lose, or draw, you move on to the next one. Um, yeah. this, this year has been a good example of that. I've had some ups and downs. Um, some comps didn't go my way. And then I've ended up winning a Giants Live. I've, I did really well in um, Dubai. Uh, just won the competition this weekend. So, you know, strongman's like that. You, yeah, that's sport in general. But I always go there to win. And I, I, I believe I've got a great chance of the British. Yeah, yeah it'll be, it'll be interesting, to, interesting to see. I always think if you go in thinking um you know you're not going to do very well that that can knock your confidence you've got to go in with confidence yeah, and if you go in there thinking oh i'm not going to do well i'm worried about this i'm worried about that then you beat yourself before you get there yeah. um i always try and make sure i mean we'll talk more about training later but i try and build confidence with training so that as i get closer and closer to the show my confidence grows and i feel like you know i i've got a great chance of, of hitting pbs or, or, or kind of winning the show and, you know, this will be no different. I've planned out all my training already. Um, actually, to be honest, I've already started. I, had a, I have a 12-week build-up towards the British. Um, and the show I did on the weekend, I just treated it as a, as a good training session, really. Okay. Um, just because I've got this cold, I'm having today off deadlifting. So yeah. deadlift's not a weakness right now. It's improving nicely. And as I've got older, I've learned that you've got to listen to your body. You yeah. know, it's better to have a day off and, and get yourself feeling better. And then kind of just pushing and pushing and pushing and breaking yourself down and getting an injury, which I've done in the past. So yeah. um, I guess a bit of an older head now. And it's, it's helping me. This year has been good. I've enjoyed it. And I, I believe I'm going to have a good year next year. Yeah. Oh, good. Just, just on, that, on that note about sort of, you know, you're having a little bit of recovery today. Obviously, I saw your uh, Instagram story. It was quite a late, um, quite a late night last night uh, when you got back. How, how, are you, how do you cope with the travelling? Because obviously I know this year you've obviously been over to Dubai, like you mentioned. How do you sort of cope with the, with the travelling? You just have to, I mean, th th this week I could have really let it get to me, you know. I, um, you've got two flights to get to Faroe Islands. It's not that far away, but you have a, a two-hour flight to the, um, Denmark and then two-hour flight from Denmark to the Faroe Islands, bus journeys, car journeys to the um, airport. So... What's essentially not that far away ends up being quite a long journey. And, you know, on economy planes and stuff like that, it's not the most comfortable being, being our size. But you can't let these things kind of stress you out. On top of that, my luggage got lost on the way there. And oh, no. <laughs> stuff like that. Um, normally, I put a few things in my travel bag as well, the hand luggage bag. Um, but <laughs> for this one, I didn't. And it was a night. I managed to get my bag 10 minutes before the show started. All right. No way. <laughs> Um, yeah, otherwise I was going to be boring Ryan England's underwear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, well, luckily, luckly you got it before, yeah. uh, before, before the show. Um, but I've, I've kind of learned I can't get stressed about stuff I can't control, you know. 
I just I just try and stay relaxed. Um, when I travel, I often just you know keep my mind kind of relaxed. I'll play games on my phone um, yeah. just to pass the time, chat to people, yeah. try and get food in. That's obviously important. Just eating, and that, that's not always easy. I make sure when I'm kind of going to shows, I try and make sure my eating is good. On the way back, I'll relax and just eat what I want. Yeah. Um, and the most important thing, really, when if you are going to be traveling, is stay hydrated because that's that's the big area where you might kind of suffer and that's going to affect your performance more than your food, to be honest, when you're food's important during training and building up muscle, but that close to a contest, staying hydrated is more important. You know, you're not going to lose a, a load of muscle in, in, in a short space of time, but you can lose a lot of water. And, you know, if you're not hydrated, then your performance is going to be in jeopardy. You, you, you're looking at like a small decrease in, in hydration is going to affect your performance massively and also increase the risk of injuries as well. So that's something uh, a few years ago, I used to suffer cramps quite regularly in contests this year. I've really mastered it and um, I haven't cramped up at all competing in like Dubai and Philippines. You know, when I was in America this year, it was really, really hot. Um, so competing in some hot conditions and I've kept my body kind of going pretty well this year. And that's just, learning a trial and an error and you know experimenting with different things and I, I think i've just kind of sussed it this year oh good it'll be it'll be uh, i'll be looking forward to see what you do with the british in in january then i know <coughs> you mentioned there about the hydration i think sometimes we get that oh i need to get as much as much food in as they can but like you say staying hydrated is is important um yeah not going to lose a load, load of muscle um, over a, over a day yeah, or one you're contest. Not grow if you're not eating but that's that's when, when you're kind of focusing more on training when you're at competition it's, you just need energy to to get you through the day yeah um so you don't i, I don't even worry about protein intake during a competition I, I look more for carbs really yeah um and then staying hydrated that's the, the most important thing oh, okay um so Obviously, I remember, or I still, you know, have watched you um, at the at the world's strongest world's strongest man um, and competing at the Britain's strongest man and all that sort of stuff. For anyone that doesn't really know your background, because we're going like uh, we've mentioned at the start, going to a little bit more about training. But obviously, you've competed in powerlifting as well. So, yeah. for uh, people listening, do you just want to give a little bit of a background about how you transitioned from powerlifting to strongman and where you got to or how you got to where you are today to be honest, i mean i've done sport from a very young age i was um a british table tennis uh, uh, player and national coach i um did kung fu um i was british champion at kung fu um played rugby for the southwest uh, did athletics at school and stuff like that so i've been sporty all my life uh, but i started strongman at 21 um and i've pretty much done strongman through my whole lifting career I've, I've done i've dabbled in a bit of powerlifting but more just for fun really yeah, um, yeah. a couple of years ago i won the british uh, powerlifting uh, the gpc british championships and i broke the british cross federation record raw I've, I've broken the record raw in knee wraps and classic raw without knee wraps as well um but powerlifting's always just been a bit on the side, really. It's just, I did a bit when I got injured um, after 2015 World's Strongest Man. I just wanted something to get me back in the gym, really, and get me lifting again. Um, and I've got a few goals still in powerlifting, but my heart's really in strongman. Yeah. So, yeah. particularly over the next couple of years, I think I can do powerlifting for a lot longer than I can do strongman. Uh, strongman's are a lot harder on the body. Um, just the, the nature of the events that we do, the weights that we're lifting, the <coughs> the whole just the way the sport is, it's much much tougher than powerlifting. And that's not saying anything against any powerlifting because I love powerlifting um, and I enjoy doing it. And it's tough in its own way, but um, strongman has a much higher chance of injuries. Um, just you know, when moving in awkward positions, you, you you're lifting awkward objects. Whereas in powerlifting, you know you're going to lift on a on a platform with a bar, and it's it's always going to be the same. Yeah. Um, whereas in strongman, even the same event can be different in a different contest. Yes. Yeah. Your, your logs are different. Your farmer's walk implements are different. The, well, the where are you going to do it as well? <laughs> yeah, but where are you going to do like the surface? I mean, you go to some comps, you're doing it on grass. You do some comps indoors, which is nice. You know, the, you know the surface is going to be better, but then you're on like. Um, you know, concrete that's kind of not level and stuff like that. And there's just all these little um, factors that come into it. So you've got to be very adaptable in strongman. Whereas in powerlifting, you can know exactly what you're going to do. Um, so training wise, powerlifting is much, much easier to structure training for. Strongman, you've got to be kind of ready for some, some contests. You, you're going to be doing max events. Sometimes you're going to be doing reps. Sometimes you're doing things for distance. Um, so you've got to be a bit more of an all round strength athlete rather than just worrying about 
lifting things once um, and you've got to be quite adaptable to, to different types of movements um, but I enjoy both I enjoy the challenge you know and I, I, I believe if I focused on powerlifting I could do some big numbers um, so far without sounding like a dick I, I, <laughs> I put this record with four weeks training after my honeymoon so um, <laughs> I, I, I know I've got a lot more in me but it would take a good amount of focus and right now with all the strongman shows I do it's yeah. difficult to invest a 12 or 16 week build up just for, for a powerlifting contest yeah so how did you get involved in strongman in strongman then just from watching it on tv i've always been a big fan of strongman i used to love watching it as a little kid um, just fascinated by what these guys could do on tv um and i think what was it 2005 um 2005, 2004, something like that. I was watching, I was watching World's Strongest Man and Britain's Strongest Man on TV, and um, over Christmas time. And I just decided I wanted to join a gym and have a go. So in the new year in 2005, I joined a gym, and that was it. I was just hooked. I, I was like, I found a contest to compete in, a uh, novice show. It was really hard back then as well. It wasn't like now where you could just jump on Facebook and and find stuff. There was nowhere to, to find strongman comps. Managed to find, <coughs> excuse me, this one show. Um, and I entered it and there was 38 guys in it. I'd never touched any strongman kit um, and I managed to come eight. I didn't have a clue what I was doing, but um, had some natural talent there. Um, and then from that, I jumped into a, the, a qualifier for Britain's Strongest Man and just never looked back, kind of kept progressing. Um, I, I was never one to kind of hang around in low level comps. I wanted to compete against the best guys that I could. So I found the best competitions and I got my ass kicked a number of times but I was asking questions, meeting up with new guys, trying to train with different people and just keep learning. And I developed really fast. I mean, I went from 2005 was my first ever show. Um, and then 2008, I competed in my first World's Strongest Man. Oh, so nice. development was pretty quick. And I, I was always quite good at the athletic events. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I've had to work harder at getting stronger, but um, the, the kind of moving events, I was naturally just picked them up pretty, pretty comfortably. Yeah. So how did, um, did you have a, uh, you mentioned there about obviously trying to train with the, um, the guys that had competed at a high level when you first started out. Was it just a case of training with them or do you have a coach or how did you go about? Back, back then there was not really any kind of people that probably would be any good at coaching strongman. Um, it was more just learning from guys that had done it, picking up tips here and there. Um, I've always been, I mean, I've got a strength and conditioning coaching background, so coaching fascinates me, and I'm always interested in different um, forms of training and, and all elements to do with strength. Um, <coughs> but back then, it was you'd, you'd go and train with guys, and they'd just kind of show you what they did. Um, and then I'd just take little things from, from each person I was training with and try and figure out what worked best for me. So it was just kind of learning little things. I trained with a guy called Adrian Rollinson, who's competed at World's Strongest Man a number of times, picked up some tips from him. Go and train with Mick Gosling, um, you know, Mark Felix, Nolly Thompson were two of the like main guys I looked up to when I first started um, and tried to pick their brains. Uh, and you kind of, without kind of sounding mean, sometimes you kind of speak to some, like looking back, they didn't really know what they were doing. They were just... <laughs> gifted guys not so i mean not so much ollie's pretty smart but um some of the guys they just knew how it worked for them but they couldn't explain to people how to to, to lift and lift with correct technique and, and how they did stuff and you notice a lot of people are they're very genetically gifted but they can't coach people yeah um i just tried to kind of look and watch and i watched loads of old videos kind of you know i'd be watching all the old world strongest man shows looking at what different guys did just picking up tips and even now, when I, I run seminars and, and coach people, I always advise people to look at lifters that are built similarly to them. Mm. Because there's no point in someone who's five foot ten looking at, say, Brian Shaw and copying his deadlift technique. Yeah, yeah. It works for Brian, but Brian's a different, complete, like mechanically, he's completely different. Um, and same with like Eddie, you know, Eddie, Eddie and myself lift quite similar, to be honest, in, in terms of deadlifting. But then we lift completely different to someone like Tom Martin, who's a great power lifter. Uh, yeah. and lifts a little bit more through his glutes and hamstrings, whereas to, um, Eddie and myself are more quad dominant. We've got that drive off the floor. Um, and it's learning what kind of works best for you as a lifter. Uh, but as a coach, you've got to be able to identify that maybe the way I do things isn't right for someone else. And, I, and I'm quite open with that. You know, I, I train a lot of people and it's about finding what's best for them. I don't believe there's just like a one way fits all. 
you know, there's, there's certain key points that will cross over, but then it's all little movements to figure out the exact best way for you as an individual. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's funny you should say that actually, because um, a couple of a couple of guys and, and women that, that I coach, a, a guy came in and he was like, "Right, I want to I want to get stronger." Um, I was like, "All oh, right." So I compete in powerlifting myself. I was thinking, "Ah, sweet, I'll get them doing uh, get them doing powerlifting." Now, with those sort of movements, it's not necessarily he's not the strongest. But if I was to say, "Go pick that weird object up over there," he's really good. Uh, you know, picking that sort of stuff up. So it was kind of, um, kind of led me to go to the gym owner saying, can I get some more strongman equipment? So the log and the stones, um, it's that kind of trying to think of weird things for him to, to, to pick up. Um, and you know, the powerlifting model, which I thought would have, would have fitted with him just, just didn't. And, um, he enjoyed the different movements he enjoyed or he still enjoys all them. Some, some people find like the powerlifting movements boring. I actually enjoy them. I love, I love all forms of strength. I like Olympic weightlifting, grip stuff, strongman, powerlifting. You know, <coughs> I enjoy all of it. But, um, you know, I've got friends that they're great strongmen, but they're bad powerlifters. And I've also got, I know friends that are great powerlifters, but they're bad strongmen. Yes. It's finding what works best for you. And also understanding what you're training for. I mean, if you're going to train for strongman, you don't necessarily need to train as a powerlifter. Hmm. I mean, right now, for instance, with my own training, I'm not pushing my squat hard at all. I'm training legs hard, but I'm not trying to squat a big number because I don't have a squat coming up in a show. And if I was to really focus on a big squat, it would take away from a lot of the other events I've got to focus on. Right. You know, I've done some strongman show. I did one show this year where we had 13 events to train for. So, you know, you know it's, it's hard then to, put, to try and bring everything up at the same time. Yeah. So... so it's- if I've got like, I mean, deadlifts always in strongman shows, so I focus on that regularly. But yeah. squat doesn't come up that often, so I don't train my squat as hard as maybe I would if I was just focusing on powerlifting. Yeah, that's gone quite nicely into the next question I was going to ask. Really, so from starting out of you know training with different guys and learning how they did things, how has your training changed over over the years? Oh, massively. Um, when I first kind of joined the gym. As a complete newbie, I did the typical kind of let's lift as much as I can every session, <laughs> you know, break my back as much as I can, <laughs> you know. Um, but I learned pretty well. I was lucky to, I had a guy that helped me um, locally, a guy called Nick McKinless. I met him probably about a year and a half into my training. Um, he's a professional stuntman and he won Britain's under 105s a few years, well, probably 10 years ago now. Okay. Um, but he was a good, he's a good all around athlete, very good grip athlete, good, good kind of. At awkward lifts and, and not, not maybe the strongest guy as a power lifter, but very good at strongman, very good at weird lifts and, and good enough on the kind of compound lifts to um, be strong enough all round. Yeah. And he kind of got hold of me and almost took me backwards for a little bit. I, I was, I got to a 320 kilo deadlift very, very quickly. Um, but then I was stuck there for ages and he sort of brought me back down and I had to sort of, you know, bite the bullet and, plan a proper training program and, and almost think like rather than thinking I'm a 320 deadlift to bring my percentages down to more like 300 and then my training improved my percentages were better for training um and then I started making some progress again um but yeah to start with it was just simple go in the gym lift as much as you can and annihilate yourself be beasted by the older guys <laughs> just, <laughs> you know listen I remember the first gym I ever trained at there was a a guy called Craig there, and, and he used to be a powerlifter. Um, you know, now looking back what I, what, with what I know training-wise, it's not the smartest stuff, but it was fun. And you just kind of beasted you on like a leg press. You just kind of got to do as many reps as you can. And, you know, it was more like bodybuilding style training, I guess, where you're just trying to break the muscles down. Um, I think we've got a lot more advanced now in terms of how to train for strength. Um, but I still enjoy those tough the mentally tough sessions where you just push yourself and they have great carryover into strongman because a lot of the events in strongman it is about how many reps you can do how far you can go pushing yourself rather than just an all-out effort on one rep yeah absolutely you know i i remember seeing you compete at you know some world's um strongest man events and yeah it's a case of you know if you've got a guy next year trying to get some get some more reps out um, and build that mental mental toughness um, and I think that is what sometimes makes 
strongman a little bit more exciting than powerlifting sometimes because it's like who's got it in them to get that to get that next rep or you know get that stone up or whatever it may be. It takes some tremendous mental strength to get under like a four hundred kilo squat, for instance. Yeah. But, to be battling head to head against someone and be thinking, I'm not letting this guy beat me, and you're going to push yourself to the absolute limit. It's it's a different kind of gravy, really. And it, it men, a lot of strong man is mental. I mean, a lot of most sports is mental. Um, but I, I've competed with some really really strong guys, but they're mentally weak, and they're easy to beat because of that. Whereas yeah. some guys are not the strongest, but they push themselves to the absolute limit. Those guys are the harder guys to beat, and, and the guys that do really well are, are all mentally tough. They, they're they all believe they're the best and they're all kind of, you know, willing to push themselves that little bit harder. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's something that I think, um, like we mentioned at the start when you said about going and you, you know, you want to head into the new year wanting to win. I think you've got to have that mentality of, right, you know, I'm going to, I am going to push and, and, and give it a go. Um, so obviously you mentioned about uh, the deadlift is a staple within your um, training, but you don't necessarily train as much uh, for the squat unless there's a squat event coming up. What are sort of the foundations of your programming? Is there anything that you... My, my foundations are based around kind of like the basic compound movements. So squatting, um, I, although I don't squat heavy, I do squat every week still, usually with a safety bar. Um, has good carryover into strongman. The core stability that you need with it has great carryover into like yokes and farmers walks and with kind of carrying events. Um, it's also easier on these shoulders and elbows. <coughs> so um, with all the pressing movements, I have to focus on. Sometimes when I when I don't need to use a normal bar for squats, then then I'll avoid it. Yeah. Um, deadlifting is a staple. Uh, overhead work. So I have I have a strict pressing day and a push pressing day. Okay. Um, I always separate the two. So when I'm doing the push pressing, I will push press from the very first set so that I'm warming the whole body up in that movement rather than some people they'll just strip press until they can't and then they push press. Right. But they don't really practice the technique. I always try and make sure from set one on whatever movement I'm doing, so just my first warm-up set, I'm focusing on technique and trying to make it better and better all the time. Um, and I think a lot of people make that mistake with their warm-ups. They're just sort of going through the motions but you should almost treat those warm-up sets as practice. Yeah. Like you would practice for any other sport. You're practicing a skill and a movement. And I try and, I mean, I do have sessions like, for instance, on my squat days, uh, on my deadlift days, I actually warm up with light box squats. Okay. Um, so I only go up to like, probably the maximum I'll go to is 250. Um, and that's a heavy day, to be honest. Usually I'm more around 220 um, area. And it, all I'm focusing on is warming up the body, the warming up the legs for the deadlifts, and also just practicing the movement. So practicing controlling the weight down, gently touch the box, and then drive up hard, keeping the heels down, just making sure there's no <coughs> technical weaknesses that need to be worked on. Um, and it, it's just a great way to practice the movement without killing yourself uh, and warm yourself up for deadlifting. Um, and then we'll move on to deadlifts. I'll usually do a deadlift as my main exercise and then a deadlift variation. Um, and then an upper back, a few, probably a few upper back movements, maybe if one starting with like a compound movement um, and then move on to maybe some machines or dumbbell rows or something like that. Uh, but I always, if I'm not feeling like I've got the energy, then I'll drop some of the, the lesser important exercises. Yeah. Depends on how much the, the deadlifts are taken out of me, um, how much energy I've got from, you know, other things. I've, I've learned to listen to my body. You know, even now when I kind of program training programs for other people, as long as they're not being pussies, I don't mind if they're like going to miss an exercise. Yeah. I'd rather they, uh, and it's understanding you're not being, a, you know, there's a difference between just being lazy and not wanting to do it and thinking, right, my body's really not got this in me. I need to leave it this week. Um, and I, I've learned through injuries or in the past where I've just pushed hard. I've always had a strong mentality to push hard in the gym. But that can be detrimental and you can end up just pushing through injuries, making things worse and, you know, pushing through fatigue and then you go backwards. So it is important to listen to your body, especially as you get older as well. I think as you, when you're younger, you recover a little bit quicker. Um, now I'm, I'm a lot more kind of aware of when I need to push hard, when I kind of need to back off. Um, and it's, it's definitely helping, you know, I'm seeing some good progress again. Whereas a few years back, I was just getting injured because I was pushing hard all the time yeah. or not, you know, I was trying to get back from injuries too quickly and 
<coughs> pushing hard in the gym all the time, thinking I've got to work harder and harder and harder, um, and then my body's breaking because of it. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm quite glad you mentioned that about you know if people are if people are being lazy because I I share sort of a similar mentality when uh, when I, when I'm um, coaching, and I, I think it's sometimes you know that when you do some sessions, it is gonna it is gonna be hard. You are going to feel a little bit tired and you do have to think, no, come on, I need I need to get this session done. Yeah, and it is that difference between oh, let's just go max out on the other on the lighter exercises. Um so yeah, next time uh, next time any of my clients listening, uh you've heard it from Lawrence Charlet now that I'll be uh, I'll be uh, borrowing that quote. <laughs> um so Obviously, you said there about the, the staples that you've got of your um, programming. How does it come up to the, uh, the strongman events or the different events that you use? Because <coughs> I'm, I, I could be wrong in this, I don't know, but how far out do you get told when the events that you're doing and the events that you might not contest, have done for a while? Contest varies. Um, some comps are brilliant. They give you plenty of notice. Other comps, I've been to World's Strongest Man and they've changed the events when I've got there before. All right. Um, but if you're good at pressing on a bar, you'll generally adapt and be good at pressing on an axle, or be good at pressing on a log, uh, whatever, you know. It takes little, you kind know, of, you know, it's, it's great if you can train on the equipment, but it's not essential to be good. Um, but obviously, if, I, if I'm told I've got a log coming up in a competition, then instead of using the bar in my pressing sessions, I'll replace it with a log. If I have an axle, I'll replace it with an axle. Um, I've got that luxury that I've got these bits of kit and, and I'll put them into the training. Whereas if it's the off season and I, you know, I've got no um, competitions coming up, then I tend to just go back to lifting on a bar. Yeah. Um, deadlifts, I, I tend to normally just deadlift. I, I vary the bars that I deadlift with just because I don't want to get used to deadlifting just with a deadlift bar. Mm -hmm. Cause in strongman contests, you've got to sometimes deadlift with an axle, sometimes just with a normal kind of gym bar. Sometimes you'll get a deadlift bar. Sometimes it's like a powerlifting bar, whatever. It, it changes all the time. Uh, my next contest, it, it's like a, a thinner axle. Right. So it's not going to flex at all. It's going to be quite a stiff, but you know, it's going to be very stiff. It's not really going to flex at all off the floor, <coughs> which I'm hoping will suit me because I'm very strong off the floor. Yeah. Do you find um, there's much variation in the, in the bars that you use for deadlift or are you pretty consistent weight-wise across all of them? Um... Yeah, to be honest, it's, it doesn't change that much. Um, right. I've done 420 on an axle, and I've done 435 on a deadlift bar um, yeah, at Europe. 435 is my PB. I went for 445, uh, 446, and I tore my lap in 2014. Um, that was probably when my deadlift was at its best, and it's now kind of just creeping back up to decent level again. It's, it, it, it was a horrible injury, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but there's a side view. And you just, I was a bit leaner at the time as well, and you just see my, my lap rip. <laughs> it's pretty pretty <laughs> yeah. gross. Yeah, I can't I can't imagine that was that was uh, that was ever nice. A lot of kind of uh, smart training and confidence building to, to get my deadlift in a good position again. Uh, for, for a number of years, I was really struggling to get it back because mentally you want to lift what you can. But I had to accept I've had to accept that I'm no longer a four thirty five kilo deadlifter, and I've had to bring the numbers down again and then work back up again. So yeah, it's um. It's always a bit of a, a bitter pill to swallow when you get an injury because you, you want to lift what you, you did before, but you've got to almost start from scratch again and work your way back up. Yeah. Well, you know, having that background of being a, uh, you know, a, a, a good deadlifter, it's just, I think it's more having that patience and, and you know, going, going back up. So, you know, you have done it before, but just building that, building that strength up. Um, so in terms of the events that sort of you're known known for so obviously uh one of them being the york that's yep. sort of become your um your event if you like yep. how because not many gyms have a york it's not a uh and a piece of kit that people have access to how did you become so good like the york at the events <laughs> that have become that have you become known for um i i train it for speed rather than for weight, which I think helps me massively. Uh, I have very good technique on it. I, I've learned how to rest the bar right across the shoulders rather than just on the top of the kind of neck. Uh, I get the bar kind of going right from, from shoulder all the way onto the traps, all the way to the other shoulder. Uh, I've become very good at bracing the midsection, um, holding the implement as tight as possible. Once you can master that, then you can work on speed. 
and I focus my training on speed. So rather than, you know, I see people doing training blogs saying, oh, 400 kilos for three steps, so I've got a PB. To me, that's ridiculous, because you do that in a comp, you're going to come last. <laughs> you, you, they're going to be much better off dropping the weight, focusing on distance and speed. Yeah. Um, so I tend to do three runs of whatever distance I have coming up in a contest. Um, and it can vary from 20 meters to 50 meters. Um, uh, well, 15 meters even. Um, I did 15 meters on the 580 in Dubai. But <clears throat> whatever the distance is, I'll kind of mark it out. And then I do three runs working on speed. And each time I time myself to try and beat it. Yeah. So I'm, rather than kind of going heavier, I'm using the stopwatch to, to try and beat myself. Yeah. Um, and work on foot speed and movement. And I, I also move in like a, like a foot shuffle rather than a step. So it's, it's like my feet are going like that rather than kind of stepping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've, I've been seeing you do the, uh, the yacht car. It's as though you're sort of like gliding across the, yeah. across the floor. The power's coming from the hips. Um, and, and the, you know, the midsection stays really tight. Core is, is as tight as possible, nice and engaged. And then it's like a fast shuffle. And you've got to teach yourself to kind of do that before you kind of go heavy. I mean, people don't believe I have yoke training sessions where I do 250 kilos just working on speed. Yeah. Um, and then I'll build up over the weeks, but I never go to contest weight. I'll sometimes do some heavy pickups as like a warm up. So okay. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of maybe, for instance, if I had 450 kilos in a contest, I might do a 480 kilo pickup and then drop down to 300 kilos and work on speed. Because you drop that weight down, suddenly it feels a lot lighter on your back and your foot speed is quicker. Um, <coughs> a lot of people do their heavy pickups um, afterwards, but then y you don't get that kind of speed increase. So it's yeah. good to do the heavy pickups first, get your body used to that weight, and then take the weight off, and suddenly it'll just feel so much lighter on your back and you just work on that foot speed. Yeah. But essentially, farmers and yoke is the same way of training it, working on time, working on speed. Um, obviously, with farmers, grip becomes an issue. But apart from that, your, your movement-wise is the same. Um, and I, I never train either of them that heavy. Uh, the heaviest I went to for Dubai was 480 I went to in training, which is obviously it's very heavy. Mm. But um, I did 580 in contest. Right. Uh, in the gym, I did pick up 600 just to get the confidence that I could pick that weight up. Yeah. But unless I have it coming up in the contest, I'll never pick that kind of weight up again. <laughs> right. <Okay. laughs> it's a horrible kind of weight to have on your back. Yeah. Uh, and you certainly don't want to be doing things like that on a regular basis because it's going to just be detrimental to the rest of your training. Yeah. You know, if you're picking up 500 kilo yokes and then trying to squat heavy in the week and trying to deadlift heavy in the week and everything else, you're suddenly going to be destroying your central nervous system and going backwards. So a lot of the event training, I just work more on technique and speed rather than going heavy and yeah. I'll leave the heavy lifting for the gym stuff. Yeah, that's a really good point, because especially, you know, if you are doing yoke carries and squats, that's a lot of weight on your back. And when you mentioned there about sort of, you know, everything's coming through the hips, that's the exact same on deadlifts. So, yeah, I can only imagine that that can um, have a massive effect. Yeah, back up on my squats so often is because a lot of these movements involve the same muscle groups. Yeah. Squatting and deadlifting, you're essentially using the same muscle groups. Um, yeah. And then on a lot of the strongman events, you are as well. So... If you were doing them all the time, you just, and I see so many people that just burn themselves out trying to train strongman because they're just trying to go too heavy for them all the time and they end up destroying themselves. Yeah. Uh, and, and then they just I, stop enjoying it. Yeah. I'm quite, I'm quite glad you said that actually because sometimes, you know, when I've chatted to people, whether it be in the powerlifting club or people who are coming in just doing strength training, um, oh, I'm, I'm feeling absolutely knackered. Well, what did you do? What did you, what did you do in your last training session? Oh, I did a heavy squat. What's your next session? I'm going to do heavy heavy deadlifts. It's a little bit like you know you've got to manage manage yourself a little bit better. It is frustrating. I mean, I, I sell some training programs on my website, and I've seen people posting up that they're following the program, and then at the end of the pro, like not even the end of like program, but at the end of that session, they're then trying to lift more weight than I put down in that program, and then they don't <laughs> realise that by doing that, it's going to have a knock on effect three weeks down the line you know yeah. if, if i've written out a program for you stick to the damn program <laughs> yeah yeah at the uh, end of the it, 12 weeks that's when you're going to get your pbs and hit the big numbers yeah it's a it's three pro is it three programs that's on your website yeah, I've got, squat I've got four actually i've got three programs to focus on the, the you know pressing squatting and deadlifting yeah and then i have a program for people that want to train for strongman but don't have strongman kit in their gym uh, 
So it's good, good movements to focus on helping you become a better strongman, better athlete without actually having the kit to train on. Yeah. Um, just on about staying on the topic of the strongman events, do you have some events that you don't really like and what are your favourite events? <laughs> um, they all suck. <laughs> no. They can all be hard at times. I'm not a fan of things like duck walks. I think they're just stupid. Um, they put you in a very weak position. Um, they just bruise up your legs, and I think they make us look stupid as well. <laughs> um, so I'm not a fan of them. I'm not, it's not that I'm even that bad at them. I'm just not a fan of them. I think they're, it's a stupid event. Yeah. Um, events that you're kind of doing for distance are always tough. They're, they're good to watch. and they're, they're good events, but they're hard. You know, they're not things you want to be doing <laughs> all the time. So I look at yeah. a shield carry, for instance, trying to carry that to distance, Conan's wheel. They're tough events, you know, mentally and physically. Um, you know, you've got this weight crushing down on you, stopping your breathing, and you've just got to try and carry it as far as possible. That's mentally tough. Um, but yeah, so that's always, it, it, it's never a fun event. Yeah. But I just try and tell myself it's 60 seconds of pain or whatever, and then you'll be fine. <laughs> And then, then, I, then I sit down and uh, don't have to do that one again. <laughs> lie, lie down and collapse. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's been mentioned, or you've mentioned it quite a lot through uh, the chat so far, of um, as you've uh, gone through Strongman, it's a little bit more sort of, you know, listening to your body and, and that sort of stuff. So, and, you know, you mentioned about the injuries that you had. I think, I can't remember what year it was, um, I can't think of the event as well. Is it, what's it, something fingers? Oh, fingers, fingers. Yeah. I remember watching one um, World's Strongest Man, and was it you tore your bicep? My tricep. That was, um, they changed the event to, from instead of Fingles Fingers, they changed it to the Norse Hammer. So they right. put these big hammer heads on the end of the Fingles Finger, and they hadn't tested it. <laughs> right. Um, and it was just a ridiculous event. You had to kind of like hook underneath it, get it up to your shoulder, shove it over, and it was so heavy, the extra weight on the end. Uh, my tricep went, and my bicep went a bit actually when I when I tried to get it up to my shoulder. Yeah. Um, uh, I had a small uh, tear in the bicep and a big tear in the tricep. Yeah, I I remember watching that. I was just thinking, crap, like what? How 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 has that happened? <laughs> um, how how have you sort of managed your uh, injuries and you know looking after your body throughout the? Because obviously you've mentioned obviously this year. Listening to your bo- listening to your body a little bit more. How have you managed probably, to maintain that? It's probably been the biggest thing that's changed in my um, kind of approach and my training. My training's always been tough, and I push myself and I work hard. But like I said, I've listened to myself. But now I focus a lot on recovery. So I do a lot of mobility work. Um, I get regular chiropractic and physio treatment, um, sort of like twice a week. Um, I'm getting my body checked out. Um, ice heat therapy. Uh, lots and lots of foam rolling, mobility stuff. I have, um, I've been working with Chris Peel, um, who runs the Move Well Project, and he's been helping improve my mobility. Um, we've got like a good routine that I just go through. Nothing crazy, because I think a mistake a lot of people make with mobility is they think you've got to be like a, a ballerina or something, whereas in reality, all we need to be able to do is perform our movements effectively yeah. uh, with, with a good range of motion. You know, There's no need for need to do the splits or something like that because it's, <laughs> it's not necessary for for what we do but i need to be able to squat down into a, a decent depth i need to be able to get down to an atlas stone etc yeah um so it's making sure my mobility is good for, for that so it's, it's all sport specific um but the, the chiropractic treatment has been a real big thing that's helped massively focus on my nutrition and like i said at the start focus on hydration so i i now put a lot of himalayan rock salt on my food and also into my water, uh, particularly at competitions in hot climates. I'll put a cap full, say I've got a 500 ml bottle of water, I'll put a cap full of, of salt into the water and I'll just drink that instead of electrolytes. So I found that is more effective for me than electrolyte drinks. Okay. Um, and basically, when you think in terms of these hot countries, you're, you're sweating everything out. If you just drink water, you're not replacing the salts that are lost as well. Yeah. Um, and since I've started doing it, I haven't cramped at all. Oh, okay. Um, and I used to cramp all the time. If you yeah. watch some of my shows from a few years back, three or four events in, and I'd be cramping. Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of coping so much better since I've been doing that. Oh, nice. Um, so how, how, often do you, how often do you train a week, and then how often do you um, do your recovery and mobilizations? Is it, your, is it every day? And then... I, I, I train like proper training four times a week. Yeah. Um, 
every other week I have like a specific mobility and event training, like a, like kind of loading and carrying events, like those kind of events that I do with my brother in Cheltenham. Um, and then I do mobility stuff every day, just at home. Yeah. Um, and like my, my mobility routine that I was talking about on a training day, I'd go for it quite quickly. So I might roll things for like 10 seconds, unless something's really tight, hold a stretch for about 10 seconds. On non-training days, I'll be doing things for up to two or three minutes. Um, you know, focusing a lot more on, on any areas that are tight, um, trying to hold like a, a squat position for three minutes, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, non-training days, everything's done for longer. Yeah. With the, obviously you mentioned there about the putting salt in your water as well. How has your nutrition changed? Do you have a big emphasis on nutrition? Or? <laughs> I do now. I never used to. Um, when I started Strongman, typical of a lot of kind of Strongmen, to be honest, it was just, oh yeah, just got to eat calories or whatever. Um, now I'm a lot more kind of scientific with it and, and a lot more kind of prep goes into my meals. Um, Monday to Friday, I eat religiously the same things. Um, yeah. I tend to relax on weekends. Um, right now, building up for the Brits, I, I want to be a little bit fitter, so I'm going to go Monday to Saturday, be really good, and then I'll relax on Sunday. Yeah. Um, I've had times in the past where I tried to get in better shape, and I was being really good, like not having any cheat days for, for weeks and weeks, and, and I got to a point where I had abs. I went down to 136 kilos, but I wasn't as competitive at Strongman. Right. So right now, I've been as heavy as 167, and that's a bit too heavy for me. Yeah. So right now, I'm around the 160 mark, and I, I get a good combination of power, and my conditioning is enough. I wouldn't say I'm fit, but I'm fit enough. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to sort of maintain this weight and just slowly get a little bit leaner. Yeah. I think sometimes with, um, obviously, having, um, <laughs> having watched uh, Strongman Live as well, you you forget how sort of big you guys you guys are. Um, is it because you always think, oh well, you know, in powerlifting there's there's weight there's weight categories. Um, do you find that because obviously you know we mentioned about um, you've mentioned that you've been in the Philippines and Dubai. Do you find that you end up dropping weight when you go to hotter climates or putting on weight or? Well, I'm pretty much at stay, I'm quite good at staying around the same weight. I'm not one of those guys that needs to eat 10,000 calories to be my weight. I yeah. can get away with like 5,000 calories quite comfortably yeah. and, and stay this size. Um, sometimes, I mean, I've had days, I've weighed myself sometimes before a show and after a show. And, you know, I've seen like, a, I've lost 10 pounds or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But, um, normally, like day to day, I can maintain my weight quite comfortably. Yeah. Um, I, I've also got good at not weighing myself regularly. I think a lot of guys weigh themselves too much yeah. and that can get in their head. So like, they could lose two kilos of water and then suddenly it's in their head, oh no, I've lost two, two kilos, I'm going to be weak. I, tr I try not to weigh myself that often because I don't want that thought process coming into my head. Yeah. You know, I try and kind of, I try and stay quite relaxed and as positive as possible about most things. Um, I'm quite a laid back character anyway and I, I, I genuinely believe that helps me. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've won a lot of shows because I haven't panicked and, and haven't sort of, when it's got close, I think some people kind of put too much stress on themselves and they, then they, they kind of end up making mistakes. And I, I kind of realize that life goes on no matter what, win, lose or draw. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean I don't try my hardest. I'm always trying to you know, compete and win, but I, I enjoy it and I have fun with it. Um, and it's, it's helped me not stress, you know, that stress can be a killer for, for any kind of athlete. Uh, it's, if you're kind of stressing about stuff, your your body will reject the kind of food that you eat in. You kind of you end up losing your appetite. You end up not being able to eat, and then all these little things affect things. Yeah. So I try and keep as relaxed as possible, and I try not to stress about things like losing two pounds or putting on two pounds. You know, I, I, my weight stays roughly the same. I can I can gain weight quite easily by increasing my calories, yeah. um, but I can gain fat really easily as well. So yeah. I've got to be careful with it and. I've sometimes found when I've got heavier, my strength increases a tiny, tiny bit, but my cardio goes down drastically. So yeah. that increasing, like maybe like a, a strict press, is just not worth the the overall package. Yeah. So I, I found this weight. I'm strong, and I'm <coughs> kind of, I'm good all round at this weight. It's probably yeah. my my kind of like competitive. On a on a personal note, I've taken quite a quite a bit from that because. Um, that's essentially what what I did. So this year I ended up uh, I went up a weight class in in powerlifting, um, right. and I, I 
uh, ended up competing at my first British Championships this year, which I, you know, I was quite chuffed about. And then I was thinking, oh no, uh, I, I need to go. I need to go back down, um, just because I thought that I wasn't. You know, I didn't like the fact that I'd gone for weight class, but because you know my conditioning had, had had gone down a little bit, and I kept weighing myself, and I was trying to get the get the right sort of food, and I ended up just being, yeah. Just getting a little bit down, really. Just thinking, oh well, I can't eat that. I've got to have this. You kind of almost obsess about it, and yeah, it's, it's just not worth it. Yeah, and then now I've sort of, um, I, you know, similar to what you said there, Monday to Friday I eat sort of, you know, similar things. If I have a if I have a treat or something like that, um, and I don't I don't weigh myself as um, regularly. I still keep an eye on my weight, but you know, numbers are still going up in the gym. I'm adding in a little bit of conditioning. You're better um, off on how you're feeling rather than body weight. I mean, body weight, obviously, if you've got to make weight, that becomes an issue. Yeah. But I wouldn't obsess about it. And I mean, even for like powerlifters, I don't see the point in the average powerlifter trying to diet down to hit kind of a body weight. Yeah. Because you, unless you're going for like a world record or something like that, or a really big major title, for most of us, it's just a bit of fun. You know, you've got your goals that you want to lift. Focus on those. Um, I understand when it gets really competitive towards the top end, you know, you want to be the best at a certain weight class or something like that. But for most of us, it's about PBs. We want to hit more than we hit the last time. Yeah. So just focus on enjoying the training, enjoying the process, go in at whatever natural body weight you go in at and, and, and do your best. And if you get to that level where you can start doing it professionally or you're going to be competing at very top, top end kind of shows, then you can look at maybe like, you know, water cuts and, and, and making weight or, 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 or whatever it might be. Yeah. But for the average lifter, I, I, it's got to be fun. And I think in, in like social media has a bit of um, like a, a, a blame for this. I think too many people now lift for social media. They want <laughs> the likes, they want kind of, you know, people telling them they're great and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And that's fine. You know, I use social media. I'm not going to kind of say don't use it. But I started way before there was any of that. I used to just go to the gym and just love training. Yeah. And I think now we all want to be kind of labelled as something. We all want to kind of, people want to say they're a power lifter, they want to say they're a strong man, boxer, whatever it might be. But there's nothing wrong with just being someone that likes training. Yeah, you yeah. Know, if you enjoy going to the gym and progress and maybe do a powerlifting comp and you like it, then great, go and do some more. Um, yeah. Strong woman comp, strong man comp, whatever, uh, bodybuilding show, whatever it might be, and figure out what, what you'll kind of enjoy doing. And then when you get to a certain level, then you can really start kind of increasing other things because you get the basics right nutrition training and rest and recovery you're going to get good you're yeah. going to progress yeah. um then you can look into all the little intricate details and the, the, the little things that make the, the one to five percent difference at the top level but if you get those basic things right you will get better and yeah. if you enjoy it you're going to get better because you're going to want to push yourself you're going to want to keep training you're going to want to kind of stick to your diet for instance and you know that's how you're going to progress if you hate it, you're probably not going to keep going. And I've seen too many people in powerlifting and in strongman that don't enjoy what they do. Right. I genuinely, I love training. I love the process. I've, I've, you know, I have days where I'm like, oh, I don't want to go to the gym today. But you just get up and make yourself do it. And it, it just becomes habit. But generally, I, I enjoy the, you know, what I do. I enjoy training. I enjoy competing. Um, and I enjoy challenging myself to try and get better. And my challenge is always, I keep it kind of personal. So my challenge is always within myself. It's always about hitting a PB, hitting, doing better than I did the last time. And that stops me worrying about what anyone else is doing. Yeah. It, I could easily sit here and like, you know, you can go on social media. I, I've got the British coming up. And I, the guys have started, Graham Hicks is messaging me now, trying to kind of psych me out and stuff like that. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't work on me. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, he, and he's a great athlete and I, I like Graham, but... At the end of the day, we'll go to the comp and the best man will win. Yeah. Um, you know, if he beats me, I'll shake his hand. If I beat him, you know, it'll be great. But um, it, it, I don't let those things affect me. I'm going to focus on doing my PB. So I've got targets on the log, I've got targets on the deadlift that I'm focused on. And yeah. if I hit them and I still don't win, I'll still be happy because it's the best I can do. Yeah. I think so that's I, like... I, I try yeah. and give that advice to sort of all my lifters and one of these seminars and stuff like that. You've got to try and make it your personal targets. You know, keep focusing on your improvements because if you're worried about what someone else is doing, you'll let it affect you. Yeah. Um, and if you just focus on your own goals, your own kind of ability, focus on getting better, um, then you'll keep making progress and you'll do well.
Yeah, I think that's um, yeah quite a nice way to sum everything up. Really, you know, having like I said at the start, having watched you compete at World Strongest Man and all those sort of events, it's nice to hear that you know that you you do it because you enjoy doing it. That you still want to get PBs. Well, I wouldn't be doing it as long as I had if I if I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, you you sit there and you know it's it's a motivation to be as a as a fan really sitting there. It's like yeah, I wanna I wanna go off and I wanna I wanna try and um, you know get a PB on deadlift and that sort of stuff. Um, so obviously mentioning there about you always wanting to get better and get PBs. Um, what does the future hold for Lawrence Charlie? What are the what are the plans? Uh, so, you mentioned I, the British. I really want to try and um, obviously win the British in January. That's um, the next. I think that goal. Um, I've got. Well, I've already qualified for Worlds from this man next year, so I want to focus on that. Um, I would love to get a podium at Worlds, and I believe with the right events, I'm really capable of that. Um, I know with the right events, I, I'm one of those people. With the right events, I can beat anyone because you know I have events that I am the best in the world at, and it's just about trying to bring up the weaknesses, if you like. You know, and they're not big weaknesses, but at that level, there's weaknesses. Yeah, and it's. It's just making sure you try and be as complete as possible. So I'm always trying to improve, always trying to get better. Um, I, I would love a podium. Kind of, you know, I've won Europe, so I've won the Ultimate Strongman World Championship, won Britain's Strongest Man, won um, UK's Strongest Man. I've won a number of Giants live shows and other international competitions, Champions Leagues. So World's Strongest Man is like the focus for me. Yeah. Um, but also, we've got these um, the World Ultimate Strongman shows as well, the worst competition when we did in Dubai. They're running a few more shows next year. So I'd like to compete in some of those. Um, they're putting some good prize money in them. Um, so that's always, you know, my motivation to try and win some. Yeah, yeah. But World's Strongest Man is still <laughs> the title to win. Um, and, you know, there's so many good guys. Um, but I've beaten everyone there is, you know. I've, on my day, I've beaten everyone. Um, it's just about constantly getting better. And like, like I said, I, I would love a podium finish at Worlds. That would kind of top off my career nicely. Um I've been fourth, so <laughs> one place high would be nice. As a yeah, it'd be nice to see you know sort of um, more British strongmen pushing pushing for that, um, which you know I'd be looking forward to. I'd be looking forward to see. Definitely, we've got so many good guys in the UK right now, so you know we're in a strong position. Yeah, it'll be uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to sort of what 2019 holds uh, in in that respect. I still have some powerlifting goals as well. I, I want to total 1,050. Okay. So, um, how how is that going to fall then? How far is that away? Or uh, I think with a good amount of focus just on powerlifting, if I could have six months to focus on powerlifting, I could get close to that. Okay. Uh, training, I, I'd need to train in a gym with a monolift, um, but I, I've never maxed out on my squat. I, I don't know what I can squat. I've um, I've always been a good squatter, but the world's strongest man, we squat for reps. Yeah, so yeah. I've never really pushed my max squat. Um, the most I've ever done, I did a very easy 380 in a competition. But it, I, I literally unwrapped it and started smiling because it felt good. Um, <laughs> and then I, I did um, 365 with four weeks training after my honeymoon um, in knee sleeves. But yeah. I've, done, I've done 320 for 12 in, in strongman before. Um, so I, I know I can squat some big numbers. And... In strongman, it's like I said, you have to squat on an axle, or you, you kind of it's, it's all awkward. Um, if I could really focus just on power lift, I, I, I believe I'm capable of around 440, 450. Yes, um, in a model lift with someone that knows how to wrap knees, um, yeah. I get to that kind of level. My bench is my weakest lift, I've done 220 in a comp. I think I can get that right. I'm right now in I've done 230 in the gym, um, with a pause, but. I'm, I'm not a huge bencher, so even 230 I'd be happy with in, in a contest. Yeah. And I've done a 385 in my last powerlifting comp on deadlift. I've done 435 at my best in a strongman show. Right. Uh, I'd love, I'd really love to do 410 in a powerlifting comp. Yeah. My yeah. pound deadlift would be awesome. You um, just, when you're putting the numbers out there, trying to do the maths in my head of what your one rep max would be, it would be... Yeah, um, scary to think what type of weight you would uh, you would squat or, or deadlift. <laughs> <laughs> I know I wouldn't match like the top top guys like Malnichov and you know Eric Millerbridge, those kind of guys. Um, Peter Pedras, is it? I mean, those guys are crazy strong. But um, I could definitely put a big total up still. 
yeah. Again, that would be awesome to see as well as the as well as the strongman. Yeah, I've, got, I've got a few more focuses on strongman first, and then yeah. if I can get like six, well, even like four months to really focus on powerlifting and really focus on my squat, I probably only train three days a week for a powerlifting show. Yeah, like maybe four. I like, I like training yeah. maybe four, but um, <laughs> I'd probably be more effective training three days a week. Yeah. Sounds like it'll be a little bit of a holiday if you went and uh, did a little bit, a little bit of harvesting. <laughs> it's just fine. I mean, obviously, I do strongman for a living, so it's it's difficult to give up that to just focus on powerlifting because powerlifting. Any time I've done that, it's just for fun. Yeah. You know, I, I paid my med, my uh, membership, paid to enter the powerlifting comps, and it is just for fun. Whereas in strongman, I'm getting invited to big shows where you're battling for prize money, and you know. That's what I do for a living, so it has to be my priority. But I, I will do another powerlifting competition at some point. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Um, so you you touched on this a little bit sort of um, before chatting about what the what the future holds. Um, but for anyone listening, for a guy that has gone out there, been there and done it, what sort of would be your words of wisdom or top tips for anyone listening? I think you probably know I'm just going to say, you know, enjoy it. Um, <laughs> it, it, it. Essentially, it has to come down to that because you can, you can come into strongman with the goal that you're going to be a pro and that's all you care about. But there's way better sports to do if you want to make money. <laughs> way better. <laughs> I can promise you that. Um, so you have to enjoy it, you know. Um, and I, I'd say, like, just get into the gym, train, Focus on training, like trying different things, see what you enjoy. I mean, you know, good, the fitness industry is really booming right now, and, and there's a lot more people doing strongman. And I think a lot of that's thanks to CrossFit because they'll go to like a CrossFit gym and then they'll try the strength training workouts. And, like, oh, I like that more than the other stuff. Then they focus on, you know, powerlifting or strongman or whatever. We've got so many more girls competing now, which is great. Um, different weight classes, so there's, there's more chance for people to compete at a high level without having to be monsters. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, for someone that's 90 kilos to compete against like the likes of us is just ridiculous. But I've seen some of the, the top under 105 and under 90 kilo guys are amazing. You know, they, what they can lift is brilliant. But just being their frame, they're never going to compete against the Brian Shaw at 200 kilos. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, now there's a lot more ability for, for people to compete in those different classes. Um, but, but you have to enjoy it, you know. Come in, work hard, you know, try and be as good as you can be and have fun with it. And it's not, I think some people just take things way too serious. Yeah. You know, I mean, people moan about everything and they're kind of like, oh, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. It's like, we choose to do this. <laughs> we're, we're not forced to do this. Yeah. If we were forced to do it, it'd be different. But we choose to do it, you know, most of us in our spare time as a, as a hobby. So enjoy it, have fun with it. Be smart. You know, there's so much information out there online if you want to learn things. Um, obviously, like you know, I, I, I train people and I have programs of people if they're looking at strongman or powerlifting can can look at those. But there's there's loads of stuff on the internet. There's loads of videos. Watch people, um, watch people that are built similarly to you because their mechanics are going to work in a similar way. If you've got ridiculously long arms and long legs and you're short and stocky, don't don't be copying. You know, <laughs> someone, you know Thor, for instance, and you, you're going to focus more on people that are built in the same kind of manner um, and, and just. If you're looking at doing strong man <coughs> and you want to be good, don't just focus on what you're good at. Focus on your weaknesses. Because I know a lot of guys there, they're good at log, for instance, and that's all they ever do. Um, but they don't work on their, their other events. And if you want to be good, you need to be good all round. So think of it, think of strong man as being a complete athlete rather than just being a big brute. If, if you kind of go in there just thinking it's just about being statically strong, then you'll never make it. You know, um, you've got to be most strongman comps. You've got one or two events where you need to be brutally strong, and then the other four events are, you know, fitness, speed, mobility, blah blah blah. There's so many other factors that come into it. So being as good as you can all round is what's going to help you in a show, because then you're not going to drop lots of points. Um, but like I said, have fun, enjoy it, and um, just keep pushing yourself. Keep trying to improve yourself. Keep it all personal. Keep it about getting better. And if you get to that level where you can really compete at the top. Then you can start looking at like the the, the, the one to five percent things that make that big difference. But keep it simple. Training, <coughs> have a plan, have a structure, eat well, rest well, and you'll get good. Yeah, I think that's a quite a good good way to, to finish it off. Really, I, I think um, yeah, having words like that from uh, a guy such as yourself is um, I know I'll I'll take from that and put that 
put that forward. Um, yeah, absolutely awesome. So uh, with that, when mentioning about uh, coaching and that sort of stuff, if people wanted to get involved in coaching with you or seminars, where can people find you or get in touch with you? <coughs> yeah, if they just go to my website, laurenshadley.co.uk, I, um, you can contact me on there. There's a section for seminars, coaching. Uh, we've got a blog on there. It's got loads of information on some of the up-and-coming British athletes, um, some of the American guys. Uh, I'm trying to keep a lot more information on there from competition results and things that I'm up to. Uh, so, yeah, come and have a look at the site and um, see what you think. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, thanks a lot for taking the time um, to chat with me. Uh, I have been looking forward to chatting to you, chatting to you ever since I sent that. <coughs> since I sent I'm, that glad, email I'm glad over. I can actually hear you this time. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, for anyone who's listening that doesn't know that, uh, we first set this up and, um, yeah, there was a little bit of malfunction in the, in the mic, so I'm quite glad I was able to set this up again. It wasn't um, my fault, which I'm happy about. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks a lot, Lawrence, for taking the time to chat with me. Uh, thanks a lot to everyone listening, um, and I will see you all next week. Brilliant. Thank you very much, mate. Take it easy. You too. Thank you. Bye.